the fourth day, so the fourth round of group stages, or sorry, the fourth day of the group stage, excuse me. And uh, I am D2, with me is Kaldi. We have our fourth match of the day, and that's going to be Bra Rose versus Kimmy. We just saw an amazing series for, uh, with Tice versus Dog. Tice taking that out in an upset as far as the deck lineup was concerned, three games to two. Now we have Bra Rose versus Kimmy, our Chinese qualifiers, trying to make it out of this group. And uh, just to let you guys know, the only person to make it out of their group was, or the only Chinese qualifier to make it out of their group was Jay Shaw, so looking to buck the trend are Kimmy and Bra Rose here. Yeah, no question about that. Fantastic play out of both uh, Bra Rose and Kimmy, honestly. It wasn't the one sided matchup by any means. Went to game five in both cases, so I think none of them are out. Neither of them are out here, even though the Western players have a slight edge in the group as far as beating both of the Chinese players. But there's, t all, there's two games left for China versus uh, versus the West here, and, and anything can happen. I think it will be tough to say, but we'll have to look at the lineups here. We see Braros first here. He has another Acro Hunter. Everyone bringing Acro Hunter now. Mechmates on top of that, and what looks to be a secret Paladin. A lot of Sioux style mid-range aggression here coming out of Braros. Right, yeah, with that Secret Paladin and the uh, the uh, Mech Mage with the Blinktron 3000. I like that uh, little card thrown in there just for a little bit of twist as we see Kimmy on the screen from Big 3, one of the oldest teams in China, if you are not aware. Going to take a look at his decks right here. Going to be that Patron Warrior with a Kel'Thuzad. Kel'Thuzad Patron Warrior, Ooh. guys. For you coming up next, Dragon Priest with a double light bomb, a little bit of defensive measures in there, and finally we're going to be having it looks like a Raptor Rogue. Yes, a Raptor. Yeah, rogue. but uh, the notable thing is he cuts the Black Wing Corruptor. That's really not standard here in the West. You never cut the Black Wing Corruptor. What people are doing though is, is it's, it's usually two Cabals, but he's throwing out one Cabal has a Sylvanas and a Chillwing. So that's very unconventional, but it is just a standard uh, Dragon Priest on top of that, though. Yeah, really interesting. It seems like the way he's approaching it is he's a little bit worried about running against some sort of, uh, you know, more control -y deck, maybe the Control Hunter, and uh, having something to be able to combat against that rather than just having the double Cabal uh, for that situation. Now we are going to be getting into our first game. It is going to be that Face Hunter for Bra Rose. Does have Leroy Jenkins in the deck that we were able to catch there. And let's see if Kimmy is able to hold off the onslaught from Bra Rose with this Priest deck. Typically Priest is favored in this matchup, but you know, we saw that Kimmy has some <coughs> unconventional cards in there, like not having the second uh the second Black and Corruptor or the second Cabal. Did Kimmy just keep Chillwing against Hunter? Uh, I hmm, that would be a really interesting keep. I suppose he wants to guarantee that he gets a dragon. Uh, wants to make sure that that Wormless agent has value, and uh, you know, going forward. I think he just did. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I suppose. I mean, it's a huge difference, right? Whether you get a one four with no taunt or a two four with taunt. So maybe just wanting to make sure that he gets that taunt up. Doesn't want to die to some early aggression from the hunter and not have the draws to be able to uh, to combat it. And uh, in the future, I mean, maybe he plays a Wormrest Agent on turn two. Maybe he's able to activate the Twilight Guardian on turn four as well. So uh, could be a gamble that pays off. We will see. And it looks like we have a frozen screen here. Sorry about this, guys. We are piggybacking on the Chinese stream, so it looks like we're just going to have to refresh here. Sorry about that. So to think about the uh, difference between what seems to be the Chinese Dragon Priest and the uh, the EU Dragon Priest, what the EU players started doing is adding on two zombie chows for the reason that if you want to win the Dragon Priest, you need a strong start. It's more important to have a one drop, to uh, have the option of going for something like Coin Valen or get something out of the Dark Cultist, which you don't get if you don't have a one drop. So if you fall behind the early game, you generally lose. So the most important thing is yeah, getting a strong start. But Kimmy did top deck, it seems to be the uh, no share cleric, so it's looking good for him. 
Right, yeah, is able to get that one drop onto the field, and now can buff up this Wormus Agent, and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously if he had Mulligan for different cards, he might have been able to pick up a Dragon as well, but yeah, as currently this Chillmoss paying off for him will be able to play that, twi that Twilight Guardian on turn 4 and buff that up as well, and from Braro's perspective, this is looking really dire. It's your is here, but... Yeah, everything seems to be going right for Kimmy. He gets the best card in the deck possible, which is the Worm Rest Agent in this case, when you only have two mana left. Gets a one drop also. You know, often you're punished because you only have four one drops in this deck. You didn't have a one drop in your starting hand. Often you're just punished by not having anything on turn one. They coin out something on turn one. You play your Worm Crest, and then they have two mana and a two drop to deal with that Worm Crest. And that generally ends up going badly for the priest, but I mean, if the hunter has nothing, then it just doesn't work out. Yeah, absolutely. If the hunter has nothing to deal with that, then you kind of just have smooth sailing, and uh, I mean, crucially, he did pick up that uh, the Northshire Cleric to be able to com compete with that. Uh, unable to clear both minions here, but it probably perfectly fine with that, especially now that he still has a 2-4 and a 3-6 taunt on the board to contest this hunter. Uh, always has the face under you feel pretty bad when you're coming up on turn 4 and haven't done any damage to your opponent. Yeah, Kimmy is just in a commanding lead here with a Holy Nova on top of it, a power with shield. There seems to be nothing that, that Braros can do. I mean, I think he's playing the correct play every single turn, <clears throat> but it's just not enough. Yeah, I mean, really all he can do here is just use the Mad Scientist and just Hero Power. Uh, he could use the Owl, but not going to get too much done here. You might as well get the damage on the board first and then use the Owl to be able to, you know, push through in that situation. And even right here, I mean, he's if he Owls one of them, it doesn't really matter because the other one is still there. He can't actually touch the face at all, so yeah, can't even use the Owl to, to great effect. And Kimmy back at full health feels really bad to be this Hunter right now. It really does here. There was some merit I guess attacking into Mad Scientist, procking a trap and then going for the Holy Nova. It would leave you with a uh, a four health Twilight Drake, a Twilight Guardian, and uh, I believe a yeah, a, a six health uh, Worm Crest. So Me you take only two damage on your uh, Twilight Guardian, <laughs> but you don't do three damage to face, so I think potentially that would have been the better play, in my opinion. I think Kimmy is trying to assert his dominance, if I may, because now, I mean, mm -hmm. up until right now, he had a perfectly clean board, full health on every single creature and his face, just trying to make his opponent concede, maybe? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't really, at this point, Kimmy is such a massive lead that it almost doesn't matter. He could just, you know, randomly play cards out of his hand and probably would pick up the win. Uh, that's how much of a lead he's in at the moment. That is one way to look at it, yeah. <laughs> Assert your dominance, Kaldi. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you don't want to get cocky, though, even if that you're is true. out. This mm -hmm. is true. And it uh, looks like we're finally going to be seeing this owl onto this uh, Twilight Guardian. It's been buffed up too much, according to Bra Rose. And finally, get to maybe get some damage in using you know, this Unleash the Hound, as well as the weapon that he uh, has at the moment. Even going to commit the Abusive Sergeant as a... Uh, hmm, Interesting production sequence there, but uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is kind of cute, but I don't think it's gonna do too much. Even if he goes all face here, it's still gonna be 22 health on the side of Kimmy. He, he can even just race here at this moment. I like uh, I like Prowler's play. I think you can't play around any sort of AOE at this point, and you need him to be trading into you to have a theoretical chance of of uh, winning this game, but. He had a trap as well, so there's some potential. But the chill mod should close most of the things down here. I don't know, maybe kill the owl with the black and corruptor, heal face, go face, maybe? I think we just go, go all face here, right? <laughs> just go with the black and corruptor to the face, Azure Drake to the face, and the uh, Twilight Guardian to the face, and then maybe heal yourself. But, uh, I mean, he could play the chill mod as well. I think that, uh, I mean, Kimmy can really choose anything here. I think uh, just putting a clock on your opponent is really important here. Looks like he is going to do a couple trades and then go with the face, or uh, go to the face, excuse me, with the Azure Drake. And, uh, I mean, he's, he sets up lethal anyway, I yeah. guess, so he figures just, how, what, what do I do? I think maybe healing the dragon is stronger. Right. Yeah, I'm being a, a bit facetious here, obviously. Uh, this... It's just this game is so one-sided at the moment and just so bleak for Braros and uh, Kimmy obviously doing his due diligence, making sure that it's most like, or putting the highest chance of victory in his hands right at the moment. 
But uh, yeah, looking really bad for Burrow. He's going to have to start trading, which is the last thing that Hunter wants to do. Yeah, it's sure is here. I mean, but if we look at the uh, lineup as a whole, Kimi looks to be taking game one here. Then he has the Patron and the Rogue left, the Raptor Rogue. Now, both of them have an okay-ish matchup against the Tempo Mates, but the Secret Paladin, I feel, has a good chance against both of them. So I would expect this to come down to can uh, Braros get a win with his Hunter and his Mates, that being the most important part. I feel like Kimi should be able to get a win with the Warrior, but it might come down to the Rogue here. All right, yeah, definitely all the matchups uh, being really crucial as far as what can match up against which. Looks like Kimmy has set up lethal for this turn, has the requisite 9 damage on the board, and uh, Bra Rose, yeah, he's just going to give it up here. Doesn't want to play out the Arjun Horse Rider either. Could be something that he wants to hide from Kimmy in the future. So that's going to be a 1-0 lead for Kimmy in this best of 5 series. Uh, like you mentioned, he does have the Patron Warrior and the Oil Rogue remaining against Bra Rose's uh, Secret Paladin, Mech Maze, and the Face Hunter that we just saw. Yeah, it seems to be though that uh, I think overall this is probably the most even uh, matchup so far. If we look at the three decks versus three decks, I think this is almost dead even. We mm. see Kimmy here getting the strong matchup in the game in the first game, so I think he has a slight lead, but it's it's really close though. It's very hard if we look at the three decks against three decks to call someone ahead this early on, whereas in the other two, or, or the three matchups even, they used to, it looked, looked like there was a one clear favorite. Right, right, yeah. Definitely going to be a hard-fought battle between these two. Pretty close uh, decks here in the situation. Oh, I, actually I was wrong. I misspoke that it is going to be the, the Raptor Rogue. Sorry, I completely forgot that that was the case. So, uh, yeah, going to be the Raptor Rogue here for Kimmy going against the Secret Paladin. And uh, playing this match as the Secret Paladin on ladder, I, I've been in this matchup before. Uh, what's to stop the Secret Paladin from just ignoring all the death rattles and just hitting the face in the situation? Not much generally. I guess the Blade Flurry is what keeps them in check. But now, if you look at the Mulligan, what you generally want to do is not keep Master against the Rogue. If you know, if you if you don't know what mm. it is, if you know it's Raptor Rogue, you could keep Master. So I think that Bravo maybe has. A good idea because we haven't seen the uh, the Chinese players favor the uh, the oil rogue. They've been favoring the raptor rogue. It seems to be right. I mean, we've seen oil rogue earlier in this tournament from the Chinese players, but today at least looks like yeah, like you say, they're fi favoring going for the raptor rogue. Could be something like a it could be a wrench that is thrown into the plans of their opponent. But um, yeah, as I mean, right now, Kimmy has a pretty solid play here going for, you know, this Raptor. It looks like he's going to take it and then play this Abusive Sergeant, potentially get a kill on this Knife Juggler. And that Ooh. will pop mm. the trap, which is going to be Redemption. So, Bra Rose <laughs> will keep that Knife Juggler for this Muster for Battle, and we will see where the knives fly. This is why you run this deck, yeah. This Raptor here, <laughs> with the 4-4 Death Rattle. Yeah, this is... We have to see how if this whole deck is worth building around this Raptor, but if there's one game where it will come down to it, will be this one right here. Now, does he play around Phantom Nias? I think with this sort of style, he may need to ignore these minions and just <laughs> potentially go for I think maybe attacking into the 4-4 is the correct call here. What do you think? With the weapon, I mean, yeah, and going face to the rest. Hmm. Um, do you need Ooh. your weapon to attack something else in the future? I don't know if it's completely necessary. But uh, I kind of like just putting on the pressure here. I mean, obviously, there's not much comeback. Uh, there's not many comeback mechanics for Kimmy with this uh, Death Rattle or Rogue. Nothing like a Blade Flurry, typically. Maybe maybe one in the deck. Um, but, you know, usually some of the removal options are removed to, in favor of more minions. So I like the move by Bra Rose in order just going face and forcing Kimmy to have an option. And we do see that he doesn't have much. He does have that Defender of Argus to get in the way. But other than that, uh, not going to help too much. I think this is very well played. He realized that this is probably going to be a uh, a repentance because he'd seen that this wasn't commanding spirit. It seemed it wasn't avenge. It wasn't rebirth. It wasn't noble sacrifice. So what could it be? Why not hero power here? Right. Looks like he's I mean, really afraid of taking damage. Uh, I mean, it's a twenty, and secret paladin has 
has uh, sweaters. They have, you know, stuff that you actually want to eviscerate for. Yeah. Looks like he realized that. He realizes they can't afford to use his eviscerate in this situation. So, does clear it with his face, like you say. And uh, just pushes back with the Nerubian egg, realizing that he needs to get some face damage in of his own. Bra Rose has a pretty decent turn. Using the one drop, the two drop, and his hero power. But uh, going to be looking to top deck from now on if he wants to stem the tide until he is able to play Tyrion on turn 8. Absolutely here. That's the, I mean, without a Mysterious Challenger, without the Divine Favor, this is looking a bit bleak for Braros. I mean, he's just going to be out of steam after this turn. Yeah, definitely. But you know you know how it is with you know Secret Paladins, right? If they're running out of steam, they're almost certainly going to draw the Mysterious Challenger the next turn. Uh, so Braros looks like he's just going to go all face here. Uh, it's a bit painful to be trading into the minions with Kimmy, and he's ahead in the race, even though Kimmy has... A similar amount of damage on board, so I definitely can support this. Kimmy now going to just put some put up some defenses, and uh, how, mu how much do you think he's going to... Yeah, I was going to say, he might just start getting aggressive here, and it looks like that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like this, uh, but there is maybe some merit to going face with the Raptor as well, because it's actually lethal next turn. Right, right, right. And when he top decks the wow. Mystic, you, you said it, you called it, man. Wow. <laughs> when you need a six drop, Mysterious Challenger is there for you. And not only does he get the Mysterious Challenger, which is a perfect drop on turn six, but it thins out his deck to be able to get a better, more powerful card next turn as well. And this is absolutely devastating for Kimmy. But this is lethal, I believe, though. Oh, is it lethal? Wow, I wasn't even... um. Paying attention to that. Uh, so 9 from here. He can't combo both the Eviscerate and the Cold Blood, unfortunately. But He can. Yeah, oh, he can he with the Digging Munch. I'm sorry. My, my, my mistake. No so worries. that is lethal, right? So so 9 plus 8 is you know 17, which is more than 16. Wow, so even with the top tick Mysterious Challenger, that's actually going to be lethal. Good catch, Kaldi. Double Repentance, though, is very interesting for Braros. That's not something you generally see in the best. wonder what type of deck he's countering with that. Maybe Druid is, if Druid is running rampant on China? We don't know. Yeah, a bit different uh, meta over there. Sometimes they run two Repentance, sometimes they run, you know, other secrets, uh, two of us. Sometimes I've seen them run ten secrets all together, which is kind of crazy in my opinion, but Kimi going to be taking a matchup which I believe is not very favored at all, and going to take a 2-0 lead in this series. Only his warrior left, the Kel'Thuzad Patron Warrior, to be able to get this win and put himself into really good position to advance. You know, question. This is why I love watching the uh, the Chinese scene. There's so many different things, so many things to learn from from them because they just view the game differently. The meta is different, and yeah, it's really interesting to see these different types of uh, parts of the world coming together here for for to play some Hearthstone. But oof, I think maybe the frothing was able to be kept. What do you think about keeping frothing? I mean, you always got a way better hand now, but I think in hindsight, you would want to keep the frothing. Yeah, maybe looking for those whirlwinds to deal with, you know, something like a muster or battle coming up. But yeah, I mean, there's so many whirlwinds in the deck that maybe, I mean, you kind of take the risk that you will draw one anyway. But I mean, it worked out for him. It looks like he has a pretty good hand at the moment. All that's missing are the the uh, pieces to be able to uh, develop those patrons onto the board. Mm -hmm. No question. Uh, now. If he if playing the Neutron as well, that's it's so interesting. I'm just gonna blown away here. Yeah, Neutron's featured in a lot of these Chinese uh, mysterious challenger decks. They like to play it a little more aggressive. Um, not until recently did they start putting in things like Doctor Boom and Tyrion uh, and those more aggressive cards or more late game cards uh, to fill out the curve. Um, usually sticking to things like the you know Abuse of Sergeant and uh, even Blood Knights we seen earlier. So. Uh, just really interesting tech by the Chinese players, and it looks like Brawl is sticking to it, but falling behind at the moment with uh, that Mysterious Challenger and Dr. Boom not going to be able to be played, obviously, for a while. Alright, so the mini bot comes down, and I believe that that is uh, Avenge, so not going to be proccing it this turn. Kimmy checks for the Repentance, realizing that there were two last game, I believe. And uh, gonna go ahead and check for the get down, but not gonna be that car or not to be gonna be that secret right now at the moment. So has only checked for two secrets at the moment. 
And uh, yeah, this is going. This is an okay card for Braros to pick up, but again, going to be needing some cards to stand the tide until his mysterious challenger. It is something that has to happen with Secret Paladin if you don't get a perfect start. Is yeah, something like a three drop on turn four or four drop on turn five. It's not the worst scenario though. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Kimi might be running away with this whole series. I know. Uh, it's just absolutely looking crazy. Um, definitely ahead in this matchup, or definitely ahead at the moment. And this is a favored matchup. Uh, so even better for him, obviously, that he won the last game with that, that Raptor Rogue. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like you say, looking increasingly bleak for Braros. Only able to play a secret that turn. But, I mean, he has kind of stand the tide. He isn't that far behind at this moment right now. And uh, going to be able to play Mysterious Challenger next turn, which is pretty huge. I mean, yeah, he saw double repentance last game, so maybe he. I mean, he, I, I would be very afraid of, of repentance now. There might even be some merit to going for the ghoul now before anything. Or the Amos myth, okay. Well, yeah, so does realize that that could be repentance, and probably another one coming up as well, uh, like you say, with the mysterious challenger. And just going to armor up, which means his board is really weak to be, to deal with this mysterious challenger. And uh, this is basically the the uh, strength of this deck, right? To be able to get this mysterious challenger out. If you can keep the board state pretty close, this is pretty devastating to deal with for Kimmy. It's serious. Now the second repentance is out as well. So, what can he do here? Is he going to just have to drop the stable goal on turn six? That'll be the it, and you just hero power from there. I mean. Yeah, it could be the turn. It could be the play that Kimmy makes. Uh, he knows it's not now. He knows there's a second. Wait, repentance. did they? Well, we saw the second repentance, but uh, did Kimmy see both last he, game? He did. Yeah, right. I, I believe. Right. So this yeah. Is... Mm. So if that is indeed the case that he saw it, then uh, pretty questionable play here. Just throwing away his Lothem. I guess. I mean, he can't even attack into with it, right? Because there's a Noble no, Sacrifice. Can't. And he yeah. can't attack him with his Death Spite because it kills his Lothab. So, a uh, bit of a misstep here by Kimi. You haven't seen many from him today thus far. But yeah, now he's falling behind in this matchup. And again, it is a favored matchup, so he does want to win this. Doesn't want to put this to, uh, put this to chance in the remaining games, obviously. Yeah, we don't want to go... Um... I don't want to go all out though. I think there's a potential that he didn't see the second repentance. We at least did. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's looking rough. There's no executor here. I don't know what he can do really. Right. He can clear one of them by using the ghoul and the whirlwind. So whirlwind first, then. Oh. He could have cleared one of the big, big minions with ghoul and whirlwind. Maybe. I don't know how, how he figures he was going to get ahead here. I don't know. Yeah, I guess he just figures he needs he wants to get the clear on the minions that he can guarantee clear. There could be some way to deal with the ghoul potentially. So yeah, just gonna go play it safe here is Kimi still doesn't have that execute and even more pressure coming onto the board with that mysterious challenger. Uh let's see how many secrets it it uh picks up. Looks like it's two and then one comes from the hand of Bra Nope, it was one and then two came from the hand of Bra Rose. So at least there's that consolation for Kimmy. Gonna be able to uh not have to be able to deal with that, but doesn't pick up the execute anyway, and this looks like it's probably going to be game. And doesn't even see the skull on that uh, mysterious challenger, so it looks like it got buffed. He th I think he threw it in anyway. Um Zooms here doesn't really help him because it comes on his turn, so yeah, no matter what. Going to be game even yeah, uh, even done as to our initial to injury. So Braros takes the first step to climbing back into the series. He has a tough road ahead of him though. Has to win with both the Temple Mage here and the, I believe it's the Hunter against the uh, Patient Warrior. That's going to be really tough. Yeah, and it is it is the face hunter, so um, it can get to a pretty fast start and get that win against the the patron warrior, especially if the patron warrior draws its late game options like that Kelthuzad, that very interesting Kelthuzad that we saw earlier. Uh, obviously, the mech mage is going to have a hard time as well, but uh, looks like we're seeing the mech mage first. Brawl Rose believing that that is the best matchup to go against this patron warrior because again, you need as many wins as possible even in games i believe there could be still a one two finish a three-way one two finish so uh, even if bra rose loses i think he may be able to squeak out a, a way to get into the final eight but uh we will do that math for you later as far as now we will be t be t excuse me be 
paying attention to the games. And uh, an okay start for Brawl Rose, but no real follow-up other than that in Sable Portal. And Kimmy just going to pass it over back. Looks like Clockwork Knight is in the deck of Brawl Rose as well. And he gets an Alex Straza, which is kind of nice, but might not be the most useful card, especially because by turn 6, you probably will have done a lot of damage uh, in that situation anyway. But, you know, it is an 8-8, and that's nothing to sneeze at, especially if you're Kimmy. He's going to need an extra execute for all the minions in Brawl Rose's deck. Yeah, that is true. Ideally, Kimmy would be using weapons and taking damage on the first 5 turns. So, there is also the potential that if he's playing a lot of minions, he can trade so I feel like if Raros is going to capitalize on this, that would be by trading a lot and getting an efficient board and then going for the Alex Dwasa. Yeah, it yeah, like yeah. yeah, it hmm. looks like he's favoring that right now. It doesn't want to give Kimmy any sort of potential to uh, climb back in this game. But uh, Kimmy more than happy to build up his frothing right now. Gets it to a 4-4, which does pretty much, you know, dominate this spider tank onto the board. And... Uh, yeah, we see... Blast Mage, yeah, oof. Common Blast Mage will probably do at least one damage to this Frothing Berserker, obviously, uh, statistically. So, uh, will we see that in a trade? Or are we just going to go for this Tinkertown Technician and hope for a ping on the next turn? I think it has to be the Blast Mage, yeah. I mean, you, you can't be expecting to draw another 3 drop to go with a ping. And Barrow seems to agree. Let's hope for his sake that it only hits once. Oh, can it hit twice or more? Oh, okay. Uh, so right Not in, bad, though. About average, yeah. Yeah, the big problem is that uh, he wants to be using his Clockwork Knight and as well, or either that or the Tinker Town Technician on the following turn, and now he doesn't have a mech to be able to use that, but um, still worked out okay for him. Kimmy does have the answer for this, though, in that Paladin Shredder. Paladin Shredder is such a strong card in the situation, and um, yeah, the Clockwork Knight is going to have to come down naked. And going to hit the face with the Goblin Blast Mage. Now, Kimmy looks like he's in an okay spot. Obviously, his uh, Sludge Butcher gets kind of dominated by this Clockwork Knight. But look at the hand of Bra Rose. It's pretty intimidating with that Alex Straza, Dr. Boom, and Antonidas. So, you know, this might be pretty dangerous for him here. Looks like Kimmy's not going to go for the Sludge Butcher and get dominated on the board. Instead, going to go for Karjar, realizing that he needs to draw more in the situation. Gets the Vonis. Yeah, Kimmy's line of play I didn't see. Uh, it's really, really strong. Gets the unstable ghoul. That's not bad. That might put a lot of pressure back on, on Brawl because maybe you're taking what, how much damage would they even be? Like 12 or something? Yeah, it would be a lot of damage. And 13. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's not something that Brawl Rose can really afford sure, 12, at the yeah. moment. But uh, he might just play the Alex Strasse to compete with this uh, Frothing Berserker. But nope, gonna be the Clockwork Gnome as well as the Tinkertown Technician. And a really dangerous situation for him. And yeah. Just gonna ping. And this, this makes a bit of sense because if Kimmy wants to use a Whirlwind to clear out those two minions, he's gonna have to hear, clear his own Frothing Berserker as well. So more or less forcing a trade. Okay, he's just not gonna trade. Gonna favor the damage. Or I mean, not. what about just uh, Shredder Taskmaster here? Or weapon taskmasters, well that works out, out too. Right. Just get what force, is it? Yeah, force the trade from the clockwork gnome and uh, get do some... fifteen to face. Wait, I wouldn't do taskmaster. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, this is a bit of a, an odd play. I I would do agree with you because the two two uh, count. I mean, it's another minion on the board that can deal with whatever comes up next. So. But, uh, yeah, Kimmy was a bit worried about that. Looks like he's going to need that execute like we see on the screen. Could also play the Sylvanas to contest this. But, uh, yeah, still broad rolls with that Alex Raza in hand. And this game is really back and forth. And Kimmy just trying to hold on, whereas broad rolls really wants to finish this out. A very important card, though, is that he got the, the cloak field out of the, out of the clock. You know, that's going to be massive. I think that I may even... Be yeah. unstoppable here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't catch that, but yeah, that could be the game just by itself, just by picking up that stealth right there. And Kimmy not looking to be in the best spot right now, and uh, Braros could even go for that right now. Uh, he's not. Well, what do you? Th I mean, he could be in danger of dying if you think about it, because you know, of the uh, potential Grom. So that how too, yeah. how safe um, do you how safe do you play this if you're Braros? 
I think I, I don't see why you wouldn't. I think Antoniadis is is the correct call here. I mean, what's the downside to Antoniadis? Really, you you lose the game to grow. <laughs> um, I mean, how how can you how can you play defensively here? Right, right, right. You know, definitely. A, a unstable, unstable portal, a, a a taunt. Is that what you want to go for? Like. Yeah, that, that is true. There's, there's really no way you can really play defensively here, so you might as well just go for the win right now, I suppose. Look, but yeah, looks he's like... got to play to win. Uh, nope, he's just... he's gonna He tried to get the kill onto both minions there, but... and didn't get it. Wow, just really defensive play here from Brawl. I was really worried about dying, and probably gonna charge us into the 2-2 if he's uh, consistent with how he's been playing. Yeah, really afraid of that, that Gromish, and this is gonna help out Kimmy immensely. I mean, he's just playing scared here. He, he's absolutely playing scared, and even stealths up his Dr. Boom. I mean, now with just a execute, and this game is wow. wide open. It's okay, let's see where these Boom bots go. Ooh. This is absolutely Ooh. huge. Does it kill the Dr. Boom? Does get oh, it! Oh, oh. And Guess now, Kimmy, board, is he in the driver's seat to take this game? Did he just throw this completely? Oh my goodness, this is actually insane. The top deck Dr. Boom and gets the Boom bots to kill the stealth Dr. Boom. This this Alex Straza is pretty dead in hand. I mean, it heals himself for two. Uh, he, either that or heal your opponent, which is obviously not what you want to go for. Uh, I mean, Antonidas just dies to the Dr. Boom. He's going to actually play the Antonidas and force the Dr. Boom to trade into it. Yeah, I mean it's better than nothing. But after the trade, what, 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 where did you go from there? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you? Couldn't you just play the the Alex Draza though? Because you've seen a couple of whirlwinds, you've seen a cruel task, so maybe he doesn't have the damage to kill the Alex. But uh, yeah, again, Bra was just playing really defensively, wanting to get two minions on the board, and uh, looks like he's finally gonna play this Alex Draza and heal himself up. Kimmy is really disturbed by that. But uh, yeah, I mean, after all the craziness that's happened so far, Braro's still in this game. And actually, Kimmy, he needs to deal with this board or else the game is over for him. Yeah, I mean, that unknowness is massive. It denies everything. Yeah, he just loses you, Kimmy. Yeah, what I can he do? I mean, he goes up to 10, but that's not going to be enough. Oh my goodness. He can't sacrifice his uh, strata for anything. He can't armor up any more than going up, or he can't armor up. Actually, what, what I, I would have wanted him to do is enrage the Anoyotron. If he enrage the Anoyotron, he takes the shield of the uh, of the Anoyotron, trades it in with the sweater, gets a potential to get something good out of the sweater, like a Vitality Totem or something, right, trades the Lothab into the Snow Joker, hero powers, and then he's got 10 health and, and avoids lethal. Like, going for what was he even trying to top deck? Yeah, the execute wouldn't have helped there. I guess he just kind of panicked and went for the draw without realizing what he could possibly even draw. Um, I guess the other thing he could have gotten is the armor smith because then his minions gain him two extra health that way and he gets out of range. But keeping in rates to overroll when it seems so crazy. <laughs> I'm still recovering from last game, Galdi. That was actually so insane. But yeah, like, it is going to go to game five. I didn't didn't even mention that. Brawls took the last game. It's going to be the Face Hunter versus the Patron Warrior, and hopefully this game doesn't isn't as crazy as the last one because my heart can't handle it. All right, so Brawls has a pretty good start here with a turn one with a one cost minion and a two cost minion, and uh, Kimmy able to fight back with this cool Taskmaster, and uh, both players curving out pretty well here. Be curious to see if Bra Rose go for the trade or just hits the face here with this Argent Horse Rider. Goes for the trade. Doesn't want anything crazy happening. And uh, just fast and furious is this game. By the way, both executes picked up by Kimmy. This game absolutely loves to troll people. It sure does here. And no weapons in hand as well. This is looking okay for Bra Rose. I, I have to have to say here. Uh, which one does she end up buffing? Looks like it's going to be the Horse Rider. Probably the play around the whirlwind. I mean, right. keeping a one whirlwind against Hunter doesn't seem too bad, but if you don't have any two drops and no Taskmaster, no weapon, it's, it can be rough. Yeah, I mean, Inrage isn't bad here. I wonder what he's going to go for. He goes to the Belcher, okay. I think there was an option possibly to go for Frothing, and Inrage execute the uh, 
the knife to a glove. I felt like that would have been really strong. Right. Potentially even uh, even Shredder coin innovate. Wow, quick shot is a innovate. really big draw. I wonder if he commits to hero power rather than using right here, or just goes for the really good trade on the Belcher. Uh, I mean, in a lot of situations, you want to go for hero power just because you want to space that out, because you obviously can only use it once a turn. But in this situation, now he gets to preserve his minions, which is very important as well. And a uh, lot of pressure coming Kimmy's way. What has happened? Kimmy was in such a great spot, but now completely on the back foot. Can't even stop any of this damage other than using Execute, and he has to use it on that Mad Scientist to stop some of this damage coming through. Still, though, 7 damage on board for Braros. That's half of Kimmy's life total. Let's see what Animal Companion is. Perfect mana to use all of the cards in his hand and use the hero power. Is a Misha, not what he was looking for. But it will block the Shredder from being able to trade at all. And Kimmy looking to be in a really horrible spot. All the Knife Jars will yeah. face. Oh my god. <laughs> the compact potential is just gone from this, this warrior now. He'll need to hero power up and most likely a, get some really maybe? good. Yeah. Oh, that's not oh. bad, but he can't use it right now. And that's going to be it. That's Bra Rose with the reverse all kill takes it over Kimmy. What an insane comeback! I can't even believe that happened. All right, just Absolutely to... insane here. Yeah, uh, but to talk about the series, this is what, what is it? The fourth series now in the row that has gone to uh, game number five here. Uh, next up, though, we're gonna have Kimmy versus Dog. So. Kimmy essentially is almost out of this tournament uh, and, and, and out of it, but Dog desperately needs a win here to go 2-1 and, and contest. But Braros is going to face Ties, both of them here looking to advance, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, see you guys after these breaks. I guess we'll sync it up with the uh, Chinese casters to see when they go to a break. Uh, until then, we will. I guess I'll update you as far as what's happened so far. Dog is currently 1-1 one one with an even game score. Tice is 2-0 and oh with uh, two three twos under his belt. Bra Rose is now 1-1, one one, uh, even game score as well. And Kimmy is 0-2. Oh Kimmy still, I believe, has a chance if Bra Rose, uh, if things go his way with Bra Rose and Dog's victory. There is a break we were looking for. We will see you guys after this. When we come back, we'll be seeing Dog versus Kimmy.